Not to supply myself with beer, that's for sure, but, uh, you know, it's pretty much all I need to kind of give us a little... Well, didn't expect that to happen, that's for sure. I thought to myself, wait a minute, it seems pretty soft down there. Who's behind me? Who's behind me? I don't know, but whoever it is, I'm doing a dance now. I'm doing the chicken, I'm doing the dinosaur, the T-Rex. Oh yeah, I'm doing the T-Rex. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, okay, there we go, enough of that. Hello and welcome back to the Iron Man challenge. So we're here on the troop screen, not the trade screen this time around, and uh, I actually noticed that Sturgia has a couple of new units, or at the very least they are renamed to something a little bit different, and they are much clearer about what their intended use is, which I very much appreciate because, as you can no doubt tell, they are... Well, two-handed, weapon-wielding berserkers that will absolutely destroy lines. And that's exactly what you want, isn't it? Yes, because that's the only thing that the Sturgeons are kind of lacking at this point. Because you do have the heavy axemen. They are your heavy infantry option. Then you have the heavy spearmen. That's your anti-cavalry option. And then, of course, you do have these heroic line breakers. These guys are pretty fantastic. And you can even see their gear now as well. I think you, you were probably able to see their gear beforehand. But I've only noticed this now. So, yes, my apologies on that. But their stats are pretty good too. Look at that. 150 in athletics. They're going to be running across the battlefield extremely fast. We also obviously have the Sturgeon Horse Raiders and the standard veteran bowman. Now, there's a reason why I was looking at their tree, and that was because I actually found out that Disciplinarian is in the game. However, it is not called Disciplinarian any further, and it is under a different name known as Veterans Respect. Now, let me see if I can actually show you that. I actually was just in a battle with some mountain bandits, and um, yeah, some of my people leveled up, of course. So let me see if I can show you. I believe it is indeed that. There it is. Veterans respect. You are able to convert bandits into regular troops. Now, there's a reason why I'm also bringing this up. There was a hot fix with a whole bunch of different fixes in the past day or so. And, uh, well, I'm not going to go through all the changes or whatever, but they have fixed a huge amount of crashes, huge amount of bugs, like, for example, the whole village um, production being labeled incorrectly. They fixed that. That was obviously a, a pretty minor thing, but kind of annoying for trading, of course. But otherwise, what they also did was players and their parties are now counted as 50% weaker to besiegers, and so they will give up much less with this change. That is amazing, in my opinion, because that will then allow us to participate in so many more siege defenses, because, of course, that was the main reason why the AI would give up. They would see the player character with their overwhelmingly strong army, or in my case, my reasonably not so strong army, but what? What happened there? Step bandits were destroyed? Step bandits hero died of old age. Okay, mm, might be a bit of a bug. Not sure. <laughs> but that's uh, that's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens with that. Might be, uh, might be a bit weird. I'm not entirely sure how that's even possible. I thought the step bandits were kind of independent, so to speak. But anyway... That is going to allow us to participate in more siege defenses, and that's exactly what I want to do. I love those siege defenses. Maybe not so much as a person that can't really use ranged attacks, but I will hopefully be able to utilize my bow in a uh, slightly better situation um, going forward. Now, there's another thing here that I actually wanted to mention. Um, they have also changed combat a little bit for ranged AI. They've made ranged AI more accurate. <laughs> uh, now, you, you can already tell from my reaction here that I'm not sure if I agree about that because I, I, I personally feel like they were already very good at what they do. You know, I, I feel like they were extremely accurate already, but... Maybe that's going to help us for both ways. You know, maybe it's going to help our units and it's also going to help the enemy's units. But of course, 
Don't really want the enemy's units to be that much better than they already are, but I suppose we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, I would like to go on to Dunglanis because I do have a number of resources I'd like to sell there. Now, apart from the ranged AI improvement, they have changed something else as well. So now, here's the thing. You know livestock, right? Well, yes, of course you do. You know, sheep, cows, pigs, etc. Well, if you buy them for a very cheap price, and then you proceed to slaughter them, which is which is something that I have never really done in Bannerlord that often. I used to do it uh, quite often in Warband because, in general, that is one of the best early game ways of making money. You raid a village, steal their cattle, slaughter the cattle, get the meat, and then sell the meat. That's basically how that would work. However, in Bannerlord, that uh, hasn't really hasn't really caught on for me, so to speak. So I generally didn't do anything in that regard. However, this change is extremely interesting. Slaughtering sheep, cows, hogs now also gives hides. Yeah, so that has given me a whole bunch of extra... Um, a whole bunch of extra options to think about here, and I am very excited about it, actually. So we're going to buy some linen here, and we'll probably go to Poros after this just to sell it off. And is there anything else here that I really want to go for? Is anything going to sell at Poros for a decent amount? It doesn't seem like it, unfortunately, but I am going to buy a huge amount of hogs. Like 5,000 worth. I mean, here's the thing. 5,000 to me right now is pretty much nothing. So I can I can definitely take a loss on this if it is going to end up being a loss. But let's actually have a look here. Okay, so I'm going to slaughter... Look at that. We just gained two hides. Obviously, just think about this. These hides, right? I'm, I'm getting meat at the same time, aren't I? I think I'm getting meat at the same time. So let's just have a look here. So if I do one... Yeah, I gain one meat and I also gain one hide. Now, with this change, I personally feel like the trading and indeed finding or discovering of the cheapest prices of livestock is going to completely blow every single other way of making money out of the water. If you can find a town that really likes buying hides and maybe likes buying meat at the same time, who knows? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. It really depends then you are going to absolutely adore this change. And we are going to slaughter all of them. Let's do it. Uh, hold control to do all. What? I did that. I'm holding control right now. It doesn't work. Okay, I'll just, I'll just do shift then, I guess. I'll just do shift and we'll see what happens with that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so they're all done. And now look at this. This is, this is actually kind of crazy. Okay. Now I'm going to go into Dunglanis again as well. And we're going to try this out. So let's have a look. Okay, so hides, they sell for 25 here, but you can sell them for significantly more in Poros, actually, amusingly enough. Okay, so that actually seems like a pretty decent place to go. Going to sell all the salt here just as a by the by. And then we are going to move on. I was actually hoping we'd be able to do a task here or whatever, but no. There are no tasks available for poor old me. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll see you at Poros then. Ah, oh, now this is absolutely perfect. I've just taken a escort mission from Rote here, and it is actually to go over to Jarmaris. Now, I'm very much hoping that it will go from Rote to Jarmaris to Zionica, but obviously that is probably not something I'm going to get the wish of. But we'll see. We'll see if that actually happens. Oh, are they? Are they? Are they not deciding to go there now? Ah, okay, they're being attacked by these looters. Okay, this is going to be very interesting, considering these guys are actually um, hillmen. They are not just regular looters. They are mountain bandits, technically. Now, I wanted to actually mention some other changes that the developers have made to troops. Yeah, they've actually changed troops a little bit, and they have changed a number of items as well. So, for more accurately, they have reduced the damage that arbalests do and they've only reduced that by five so it's still extremely deadly but you know they've reduced it by five a little bit they've also reduced the weight of many shields and that's a pretty big change because for someone that obviously likes to use a shield like me 
that's going to very much help a low athletic skill character to be able to move just that much faster. And it, it's a pretty significant change as well. In some cases, they're almost halving the amount of weight that these shields will have on uh, on a person when they're equipped. So pretty uh, pretty interesting change actually. I wonder I wonder why they decided to do that. It was probably because, as I say, low athletic skilled characters are extremely slow. Like for example, if I get off right here. And look, just look. wait, wait a minute. I pressed Z by mistake. Okay, so look, look at how slow I am. Look at that, right? And obviously, I'm using a shield that I don't believe has been changed. So obviously, there's not going to be any change to my speed at the moment. But interesting, nevertheless. No? Yes, I think so. Anyway, I'm going to be taking these prisoners. Thank you. Take all the loot as well. And uh, oh, oh, more raiders. More raiders? We're just harmless shepherds, he says. You'll never take us alive. Ah, yes. Okay, so apart from the various items being changed, they've also swapped around a bunch of perks and a couple of stats with some of the other, um, some of the other units as well. And they've changed uh, a lot of units from all kinds of different factions as well. Most notably, they've changed the skirmishers, the tribal warriors, and I think one other from Azurai, because obviously Azurai is going to be the most... Um, what should we say, uh, pre prevalent, I guess, because I, I think I'm probably going to end up joining the Azurai at this point, because we haven't really done, as I said before, we haven't really done a real series on the Azurai, so to speak. We've done, um, we've done some yeah, pretty extensive playing with Imperial units. And we did end up using Azurai Cavalry very late on in the Kuzate Carnate series, but that was pretty much it. And that's uh, that's not really giving the full experience of the Azurai, in my opinion. I'd like to actually do some damage here, but this map is throwing me off like no one's business. Oh, yes. Okay, come on now. Yeah, there we go. A nice little stab. Okay, I'm happy with that. <laughs> 64 pole up skill. I'm happy with that. Why not? Why not? All right, so let's just take all that. There we go. And let's actually just take a quick look at what else they have here. All right, so they've changed pricing of a horse for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why they did that for the Empire. Ah, maybe it just makes it a little bit easier for them to um, for them to equip their their cavalry units or something. Whoa, these these this caravans being attacked by basically everything, aren't they? Look at that. That's crazy. All right, well let's just do that. And uh, this was not a, a caravan ambush mission by any means. This is a bit weird. All right. Well, we're going to be paid a pretty significant sum for it. And they have to visit multiple settlements, which is the reason why I was hoping that they would go down to Jamaris, but okay. Otherwise, they've uh, changed the Kuzate very, very briefly. They have swapped the pike and longsword perks for the spear infantry and they've also swapped the mace and stronger shield perks for the spear infantry as well so not a um I, i'm not entirely sure if that's particularly impactful but i would assume they, they're doing it for a very specific reason because they probably want these particular troop types to fulfill certain roles as is probably the case from the Sturgeon units, the line breakers, because the line breakers in general are quite obviously for a clear purpose, and in general I think that that is all the better, because then you're going to have a much easier time of knowing exactly what kind of unit you want when you want it. Oh, forest bandits. Right. I do not like these. <laughs> Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I have a couple of people that can actually level up real quick first. Yeah, so what I'm actually going to be doing going forward is I'm going to try and get my leadership skill up. I'm actually kind of happy that I expect a little bit of my focus points into leadership. Because if you think about it, just look at this. If I get Veterans Respect, I'm going to be able to level up these Forest Bandits into Batanian Fians. And while I'm not going to primarily use those units, because of course this is not a Batanian focused series by any means, it would be helpful. It would be helpful. And obviously I'm not going to replenish them if they were to die. It is just an opportunistic fashion 
that I, I think actually is quite in keeping with a merchant's mindset. Because let's face it, if a merchant is going to be making any kind of money whatsoever, they do have to be a little bit opportunistic. Okay. That's exactly also the reason why I absolutely loathe forest bandits. They are so incredibly accurate. Oh yeah, that actually... Um, <laughs> it comes back to me now that they've actually changed the AI in the way that they've made their ranged attacks just that much more accurate. This is actually kind of dangerous for me specifically because obviously I'm doing the Iron Man challenge right now and them being accurate to a uh, almost laser-like degree is probably going to result in my demise. So we'll see if that actually happens. Because if I do get killed by a ranged unit, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make all the excuses. No, I'm not going to make any excuses. <laughs> I'm just joking. But yeah, it is more than likely that I will probably end up dying from a forest bandit at some point. If I continue fighting them, that is. I mean, obviously I'm forced at this point into fighting them. I would generally try to avoid forest bandits as much as I possibly can. However... You do get to take them prisoner, which is a very, very useful thing to do. Because, as we know, they are pretty fantastic. Oh! I see. Wait a minute. That's not, that's not actually right. I feel like they, they, they might have overlooked this. I think this might be um, something that needs to be hotfixed. Because this freebooter is required to have a veteran's respect perk to be able to upgrade a bandit troop to a normal troop forest bandits are not normal troops they are indeed bandits so it's in the name you know it's in the name <laughs> but uh, yes uh i think that needs to be reverted uh maybe they thought it was too powerful I'm not entirely sure yeah as you can see you can't even um upgrade bushwhackers into freebooters now which is actually kind of sad. Uh, same thing with Nomad Bandits right here as well. So yeah, that I think that needs to be reverted. Um, or not reverted, but I think it needs to be changed so that you can still continue to level up Bandits into Bandits, of course. I mean, you know, that, that makes all the sense in the world. This, uh, this change is basically being like, okay, we're going to just kill off any kind of Bandit... Um, any kind of bandit army potentially right now. Anyone that has a bandit army, I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're basically done. Because unless you recruit these forest bandits um, from when they are actual bandits already, you know, forest bandits themselves, then um, you're not going to be able to level them up unless you have veterans' respect. Which obviously is quite important, you know. Anyway, we're going to Maranath right now. I think what I might do... What? That was it? He only needed to go to one? It said two settlements, didn't it? Okay, well, that's kind of strange. But otherwise, I do have the ability to sell a number of horses for an absolutely insane amount. And I do, I do still have kind of like a herd deficit here going on. So I'm actually going to sell all of my desert horses because we're going to be going down to Azerai territory in just a second anyway. And I suppose it makes a little bit of sense at least to do that. Okay, there we go, and uh, that's 10,000. Do we have anything here that I can sell? Well, linen is actually selling here for slightly good, I think. It seems to be selling for a pretty decent amount. So let's just sell all of it, why not? And what about some wine, some clay? Lagata, hmm. Lagata is actually buying clay for a pretty decent amount. So let's have a look here. So let me buy, let me buy like 83, I don't know. I don't, I don't really care on the... Uh, precise number of it. I'm just trying to get uh, something that might potentially get us a little bit of profit as we make our way down to Azerai territory. I think I am actually going to be um, pledging myself as a mercenary maybe first. I'm actually not sure about that to be honest because I was thinking to myself what do I want to do? Do I want to become a mercenary and just be a little bit less permanent? In the Azerai, uh, in in the Azerai faction, or do I want to go a little bit harder and then be like, okay, vassal, let's go vassal straight up. You know, that's the kind of thing that I'm kind of wrestling with right now. I'm not entirely sure which one to go for, because on the one hand, I think it would be very cool to have a thief to look after. I think having a thief to look after is 
super fun because you are able to improve it however you wish and as a merchant it kind of makes sense for us to have a good relation with our village because they might very well have a fantastic resource uh, although it's not going to I don't think that's really going to happen because if you look at the map and you see where the Azari are currently expanding. Oh, look at this. Ah, the the, the Bear Tilt clan has has increased to, to rank three. Fantastic. That's great. That means I can have one more workshop. And it also means I can have one more companion too. So I can have an additional caravan running. That is fantastic. All right. So let's go to Ortizia then, I guess. We'll make a brief stop over at Ortizia. We'll try and pick up any random person that we can. They also fix the companions, by the way, as well. Apparently, some companions were spawning without weapons and with very low stats. I obviously was unaware of that because I didn't really care about these people's stats at all. I literally just picked up whoever I basically could get my hands on. And um, yes, just went on from there. So yeah, I, I guess I'm going to get uh, this guy. Going to get this guy and we're just going to get him. There we go. And we're going to ransom... Ooh, hired blades. Oh, yes. I'm not going to ransom my prisoners right now because I have some forest bandits in my uh, prisoner's hold. And I'd love to be able to keep them around, at least for the moment. Let's see if I can recruit some people. Let's recruit some more people because, of course, my maximum capacity has also increased, which is fantastic. So let's see what else is going on here. Can I buy anything for a cheap price? Desert horses are extremely expensive here by the looks of things as well. Clay is actually selling for a decent amount here. Not bad. Let's uh, let's sell quite a bit of it. Why not? Uh, let, um, olives. Eh. Let's just buy some dates. Buy some grapes. Yeah, salt. Um, hmm. What can we actually take down to Askar? I don't believe I have any trade rumors down there, unfortunately. So that's probably not going to work out too well for us. Maybe some silver ore. Hmm. <laughs> it's not really going to do much. All right, so let's just speak to this guy. Get a caravan formed with Edwin right there. And he can go and do whatever he wants to do. And I think what we're probably going to try... Oh, there's actually a siege going on here versus the Azurai. Hmm. Okay, so we have an option. We could become a vassal. And then we could go in. Uh, actually, we couldn't really go in because we'd have to pass through enemy lines and we would then end up losing a huge amount of people, which would probably not be that good. So, mm, it's kind of a difficult decision to make because on the one hand, I'd love to be able to participate in a siege defense, but on the other, I don't really want to lose half of my army for nothing. Oh, they're actually against the Batanians? I actually thought this was going to be the Western Empire because as you can see, the Western Empire seems to be very much... Um, I don't know, very much uh, trying to encroach in their territory, but um, yeah, weird stuff, weird stuff, okay. So um, I'm actually going to just stick around here because, well, as we know, anytime there's a town that's under siege, they're going to need some food after it, and I am here to provide such a service. Wow, I, I doubt they're even going to achieve victory. Oh, will they? I think they will, actually. Yeah, this is extremely costly for them. I'm actually wondering where the Azurai are. There you go. Kuyas has been indeed taken. Very interesting indeed. I would not have expected something like this to happen so easily. But anyway, uh, I can sell the silver ore here for a massive amount actually. So let's do that. And I'm going to sell all my grain because I already have a number of other pieces of food. So I don't really need to worry about it too much. We can sell some meat here as well, but where do I actually sell meat that gives me a good profit? Because as far as I'm aware, this seems to be the best. And I got all of this for free, basically, because the hides already covered the cost for the hogs. So I can basically just get rid of a bunch. And there you go. Of course, doing it that way, by buying hogs or buying sheep or whoever, and slaughtering them, it actually doesn't provide you with trade skill benefits, which is kind of sad and definitely something that I don't really appreciate. But, you know, you can't have it all because, of course, you're creating the item rather than trading the item. So, yeah, that obviously makes sense. Otherwise, 
Hmm. I'm I'm not sure whether the Azariah are going to be able to defend against this. It's a bit strange how they are on the back foot so heavily here already. Oh, look at that. The embers and the bear child have made peace. Ah, that sounds that sounds great. Thank you very much for that. All right, so we're down here at Askar once again, and as we know, that is absolutely fantastic. I will get rid of all the clay. Oh, massive. What? Why is grain so incredibly cheap here? Do I need to build a brewery here to take advantage of the insane amount of grain that they have available? I might need to. I might need to. Okay, so we're going to buy 152 of this before it starts to go up to the next price tier. And I'm going to buy all the desert horses just purely because I can. And we will also buy all of the Azurai horses as well. And I'm wondering whether we have any herd problems. No, we don't have any herd problems right now. So I'm going to buy some mules. Now we have a slight herd problem, so I will then leave the mules as they are. Do I actually, do I, do I want to do that? Uh... I don't really want to get any more herd problems. Let's go for let's go for another 10. There we go. That seems like a good plan to me. Okay, so wait a minute. What's actually going on here? Why do they have so much grain? Because as far as I can tell, they just have horse merchants. Wow. Oh, they do have... What? Wow. Okay. Okay. Hello, then. Hello. Escorting a merchant caravan might be fun after this as well, but I think I would like to join as a vassal of theirs, because if I can get a brewery up and running here, then that's pretty much all I need, really, to, um, <laughs> not to supply myself with beer, that's for sure, but, uh, you know, it's pretty much all I need to kind of give us a little... Well, didn't expect that to happen, that's for sure. I thought to myself, wait a minute, it seems pretty soft down there. Ah, well... Never mind. Almost, well, almost broke my legs. I think I probably did break my legs, actually, thinking about it now. Anyway, let's go up to the brewery and see if I can maybe purchase it. And uh, there's a number of uh, interactable objects in here as well. Okay, I would like to buy this. There we go. And we're going to keep it exactly how it is. There we go. Fantastic. And now, can I sit down? Yes, I can. Oh, yeah. Look, oh, now I'm looking behind myself. Uh, uh, who's behind me? Who's behind me? I don't know. But whoever it is, I'm doing a dance now. I'm doing the chicken. I'm doing the dinosaur. The T-Rex. Oh, yeah. I'm doing the T-Rex. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, okay. There we go. Enough of that. So, I think this might be a really good idea to try out, uh, or shall we say, it's, an, it's a nice opportunity to try out this new thing. So, apparently it is alt and left click rather than alt and right click. Uh, someone said previously that it was right click, so I was like, oh, okay, maybe it's that. But yeah, because it used to be right click in Warband, of course. But anyway, okay, please just urge on, urge on, just leave this caravan alone, sir, please. Just leave the caravan alone. I am on urgent merchant business. I am supposed to speak to Gaunter Odim, and uh, he is very much waiting for what looks like one one camel and something else. I don't know what they're carrying here, but we are on our on our way to Praven, actually, amusingly enough. And um, yes, <laughs> it's going very well, as you can no doubt tell. Yes, uh, we, we don't really have um, any worries so far. I have not been attacked. The caravan has not been attacked. And we have had no danger whatsoever, which I am very, very surprised about. Bear in mind, I am going to be paid 1200 per day. And it has been about three days, which is kind of... I, I think it's been about three days. I'm actually not sure so far. But um, it's been quite a while. So, I'm wondering whether they are going to be attacked at any time. It doesn't look like it, to be honest. I feel like this was just purely an escort mission with no danger whatsoever, which, in my opinion, is one of the best for early game. However, obviously, if you are uh, unsure whether the caravan is actually going to be attacked, then it could very well turn out to be one of the hardest. Oh! There's another stop? How many? Two. Okay. <laughs> oh dear.
<laughs> this is going to take us a while, isn't it? All right, so we're about to enter Varchek, and as you can see, he hasn't been... Look at the money! What? He hasn't been attacked at all in this entire time. He was not attacked. Ever. Varchek's actually already been taken by the Vlandians, by the way. What's going on with that? I have no idea. Uh, I feel like someone has defected, no? Hasn't someone defected? Let me actually just take a quick look here. Varchek, who's the lord? Kalatilt. No, so there is no defection from the uh, from the Sturgeons. That is very strange. As you can see, Varchek has been besieged by the army of Isvan. Oh, that's actually just now, isn't it? No, that was eight days ago, actually. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what's going on with those guys. But, uh, yeah, some weird stuff, no doubt. Some weird stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, there's a huge amount of stuff going on in the in the game world right now. Seems like there are a huge amount of different sieges and things. And, as you can see, we can sell our Azurai horses for a very significant amount. We will sell our desert horses for a similar amount. Look at that, 24,000 right there. And we will probably also sell a couple of our mules, just because we can. And I don't really have anything else that I can potentially buy here. But I am going to buy a little bit of food variety because at the moment we have no food variety whatsoever and it is making my men somewhat sad so i would very much like to try and remedy that and there you go we gained another three trade skill points just purely for the from the horses the horses are fantastic absolutely great it's really nice to to work with those guys all right so otherwise i now have one additional attribute point and one additional focus point we're going to be leveling up leadership and social once again. There we have it. Okay, now let's take a look at the map real quick. Oh, Saniopa has fallen to the Kuzate. And what's going on here? I, what, what is happening? The Northern Empire is, is going to be murdered very, very soon. As you can quite clearly tell, they only have two towns remaining. Mysia and Epicrotia very interesting indeed okay so what else is going on Britannia is not really doing much Sturgia once again is getting absolutely murdered by the Vlandians and the Kuzate from both sides the Azurai are kind of having a bit of trouble with oh yes having quite a lot of trouble with the Britannians actually and I said earlier just just moments ago that the Britannians are not really doing much but they are indeed doing quite a bit Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like. Otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.